Hi, happy Easter. Thank you for joining us for today's message from Calvary. Our mission at Calvary is to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Today's message is what we commonly call the Easter story. It's all about Jesus' miraculous resurrection from the grave, which proves that He truly was and is the Son of God. The Life Notes are available to download from calvaryaz.com forward slash life notes. Now, here's Pastor Chad Garrison. Hey, you can have a seat, and I'm going to invite you to take your Bible or your Bible app and turn to the Gospel of Luke chapter 24. Luke 24 is our text today. If you don't have a Bible with you or an app on your device, that's fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you if you have a seat. Uh, and uh, if you do, then you can uh, find that. Turn to page 1051. Page 1051, you'll be able to follow along with us. And as always, if you're here in the room and you don't have a Bible and you want one, take it with you. Take one of those with you. It is our gift to you. We want you to have God's Word, read God's Word. If you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, then message us. We'll be glad to get you a Bible. And, and uh, whether we mail it to you or deliver it to your house, we want everyone to have God's Word and read God's Word because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Hey, I just have to say to this 3.30 crowd that is joining us live, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you because you care enough about the, the condition of men and women, boys and girls who don't know Jesus so that they can have a place to sit so you're willing to be crowded at a service we never have except on Easter uh, weekend. And I love it and I appreciate it. And, you know, just on a personal note, it's nice to know that somebody listens. So... Uh, so you're my heroes, uh, and I just want you to know that. So happy Easter. Happy Easter. Hey, if, uh, by the way, if, uh, uh, since we're talking about Easter and we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, uh, and, and right now it's, you know, Easter morning in Jerusalem, uh, but uh, if you're sitting there thinking, I'd like to be in Jerusalem, uh, we're going to go there in 2025. Uh, we're going to do an Israel trip. And so if that's been on your bucket list, uh, then we have brochures. We ran out last week. We printed more. There are brochures out at the Connection Center. Uh, stop by, pick one up, and, and get the information on that or email me. Uh, it's just Pastor Chad at calvaryaz.com. And I will answer your questions and get you the information. We would love to take you with us as uh, we go and walk where Jesus walked. It is a great experience. Makes the Bible come alive. So, Hey, uh, it is Easter, and we are celebrating the death and resurrection of Jesus, and, uh, and that is great. It's, you know, it's an awesome weekend holiday, and then Monday, we celebrate another thing. You guys know what Monday is? There's like four of you that go, yeah, I know what it is. Yeah, it's April Fools. It's April 1st. Now, I just got to admit, um, I like Easter a whole lot better. Okay, I like Easter a whole lot better. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's... It's the salvation of the world we're celebrating, but, you know, that's the, the big picture. But on the personal side, I like Easter a whole lot better because I hate being pranked. Okay, how about you guys? I hate being pranked. Okay, let's just do a little confession. I just confessed, you know, I like Easter better than April Fool's. Um, how many of you in this room are the pranksters? Go ahead and raise your hand. Go ahead and confess. You love pranks. You love pulling pranks. Okay, I say, don't be timid. It's okay. We love you. We'll forgive you, Okay. How many of you uh, uh, really just share my disdain for being pranked? How many of you hate being pranked? Okay. A lot of, a lot of neutral people in this room. They're like, well, it depends. Uh, okay, now who are those twisted people who hate being pranked but love the videos of other people being pranked? Now, <laughs> yeah, you guys need to repent, okay? That's just evil. If you don't want it to happen, I watch those things and I'm watching people and I go, oh man, that's terrible. I don't watch this. I don't want that happen to me. Anyway, hey, uh, the best prank ever pulled on me was actually pulled on me by a pastor's wife. I was a 20-year-old youth pastor, young and stupid, okay? Maybe naive is a better word. So she's teaching this women's Bible study on the Passover, and they've got all the Passover food there, and they're talking about it. Well, I'm come bebopping through the room looking for something for the youth activities. And, and I go, hey, what are you guys doing? Because there's food, and I'm a youth pastor, right? And, and she goes, oh, we're celebrating Passover. Have you ever done that? And I was like, no. She goes, do you want to try some of the food? And I was like, not really. Um, but what do you have? And she goes, oh, here, these, these, these are bitter herbs. They don't taste much. Just try some. And she gave me this big old piece of horseradish. Raw horseradish. Now, did I mention I was young and stupid? So, 
She said, by the way, it doesn't have much flavor, just bite really hard. I popped it in my mouth, I bit down really hard, and in nanoseconds, you know what happened. I mean, my nose became a river. I could not see, I could not breathe, uh, and there, the only thing I could hear was about 15 to 20 church ladies laughing their heads off at the stupid youth pastor. So I don't trust church ladies anymore. Um, <laughs> So, uh, you know, now you've got something to talk about over dinner or over your life group this week. Uh, share your prank experiences, good or bad. But today, I want us to look at the Easter story from the perspective of the world's greatest prank. Now, that might sound a little bit sacrilegious, but stay with me, okay? Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12 uh, Luke says, but on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they, who are they? They are the women who saw where Jesus was buried, uh, who saw the uh, crucifixion and, and where they placed him in the tomb. They went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel, and as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise? And then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the 11 and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles, but these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. So did you notice all the surprises in the story? that make it seem like a, a prank, the completely unexpected moments. The women show up to anoint Jesus' body, and he, he's gone. He's not there. Suddenly, angels appear, which sounds just like a prank thing, right? Angels appear, and they ask them, why do you seek the living among the dead? They were seeking the dead, but Jesus was alive. And, and then they, you know, kind of reminded them, the angel reminded them, hey, Jesus told you this had to happen. By the way, in the Gospels, Jesus told his followers three times, three times, this is what has to happen. And none of them paid attention. And then they went and told the apostles, and the apostles dismissed the women's report as foolishness. Wow. The greatest miracle in history appears like an amazing prank, and everyone felt foolish, right? The women felt foolish because they went to anoint a dead body, but... Jesus was alive. The apostles felt foolish because they dismissed the women's report until Jesus showed up in their midst that night. They're in a locked room and Jesus appears and suddenly that idle tale came to life. And then there's that, you know, the one apostle who was missing, Thomas, when Jesus first appeared. What did he say to the other, you know, disciples when they said, oh, Jesus appeared? He's like, unless I put my finger in the nail prints in his hand, unless I put my hand in his side, I'm not gonna believe. A week later, Jesus shows up again. Thomas is there, and Thomas is like, now I believe, and Jesus goes, uh-uh, put your finger right here. Come on, put it, put it in the hole. Put, put your hand in my side. And, and Thomas felt foolish. Um, now, I hate being pranked because I hate feeling foolish. And anyone with me, anyone hate feeling foolish? Okay, Good. Now, that said, today, I choose to be a fool for Jesus. In 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So today, I wanna to invite all of you to join me in being a fool for Jesus. It is, without a doubt, the best option uh, if you believe that Jesus existed as a real person, which, by the way, if you don't, there is overwhelming historical evidence that Jesus walked this earth, okay, that he was a person, a real person, a live person, then, and if you believe that Jesus existed as a real life person, then you have to decide what to do with Jesus of Nazareth. 
Now, there are rationally only three options for believing about Jesus, and I'm borrowing that from C.S. Lewis, okay, who wrote this book called Mere Christianity. If you haven't read it, you might want to pick it up and read it. But C.S. Lewis says there's really only three options, rational options, that you can consider for Jesus. Because there's a lot of people who want to recognize Jesus as a great teacher or an inspiring individual or an amazing prophet. But honestly, Jesus cannot be any of those things. He can't. There are actually only three options for believing about Jesus. That's it. Okay? And, and again, this is just rational. This isn't, you know, trying to consider other things. So the three options, uh, considering the claims of Jesus, based on the words of Jesus and the history of Jesus and the church. First option, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Now, at Calvary, we believe Jesus is the Son of God. We believe that he was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He died on a cross to pay for our sins, was raised from the dead, ascended to heaven, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Okay, that's what we believe. It's one of our essential beliefs here about Jesus. That's our belief. We believe Jesus is Lord. Why do we believe that? Because that is what Jesus claimed. That is what the Bible tells us that Jesus did. And if you need some proof, how about uh, just listening to the Apostle John? He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he dies, yet shall he live. Okay? And finally, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, you cannot logically believe Jesus is a good guy. He's a teacher, a prophet, or a holy man because Jesus claimed to be God in the flesh. He claimed to be the Messiah. He claimed to be the Savior of the world, the only one who can forgive sins and provide eternal life. So my hope today is that you believe Jesus is Lord. I mean, the Apostle Paul put it this way, if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. We'll have our sins forgiven. We'll, heaven will be guaranteed to us and we know that God will change our lives. You've already seen one declaration of life change in the baptism earlier. So uh, I choose to confess Jesus. I choose to be a fool for Christ. And, and if this is something that intrigues you and you haven't yet decided what your future is in, in relationship to Jesus or you're brand new to the faith, can I encourage you to go out after the service and sign up for Alpha? Check it out. They're starting to meet on Thursday night and, and they would love to have you come and learn with them about Jesus. It, it's, it's not a threatening environment, but it is an informational environment. So I just encourage you to check it out. By the way, uh, I, I hope you discover that Jesus is Lord because the other options are less than satisfying. Option two, Jesus is Lord or Jesus is a liar. He's a liar. He's a con man. He is a deceiver of the greatest, uh, you know, measure. Uh, if Jesus isn't the Son of God and Savior of the world, then he lied. Now, there's a lot of skeptical people who will go, yes, he lied. But actually, they don't think that Jesus lied as much as they say, oh, well, the apostles just invented Christianity after Jesus was killed. It's all a hoax. It's all a ruse. Uh, they just, the apostles just perpetuated a big, fat lie. Really? Why? Why would they lie? I mean, if you're going to consider that, then, then why would they lie? Did the apostles get wealthy from preaching Jesus? Did the apostles you know, yield and wield a whole lot of power socially and politically from preaching Jesus? Did the apostles long, live long, comfortable lives because they preached Jesus? Now, see, a lot of you know the answers, but yeah, the, the answer is overwhelmingly no. Ten of the original apostles died horribly gruesome deaths. They were crucified. They were beheaded. They were skinned alive. They were run through with a spear. The 11th, the Apostle John, was tortured, persecuted, and exiled on a rocky island. They lived in poverty. They suffered persecution. They were imprisoned. And eventually, they were executed. So does anyone, much less a group, make these kind of sacrifices for a hoax? See, I don't think so. 
You have to decide for yourself, but Jesus is either Lord, he's liar, or option three, Jesus is a lunatic. <laughs> he's just crazy. He's insane. He's nuts. I mean, think about it. Jesus did teach his followers some really insane things. Like, we're supposed to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us? Come on, that's crazy. We're supposed to forgive everyone as God forgives us? That's insane. In fact, he said that if you want to be great, you have to be the servant of everyone. Come on, does that make any sense? Great people don't become servants. And, and look, we all know how charismatic, delusional people have built followings. So was Jesus just a crazy man who inspired incredible loyalty? Now, one of his opponents actually answered this question for us. The story is found in, in the book of Acts, chapter 5, uh, and, and the apostles, you know, they started preaching Jesus right, you know, about 40 days after he uh, ascended from, uh, from the earth. And, uh, you know, day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came, and 3,000 people became Christians the first day of the church. And then they performed miracles, and, and a couple of them got arrested and, and basically accused the Sanhedrin of killing the Messiah, and they, you know, punished them and let them go. Told them to stop preaching in the name of Jesus. Did they stop? No. They kept preaching in the name of Jesus. So eventually, they arrested all uh, 11, actually 12, because they replaced uh, Judas, all 12 of them. Held them, you know, in prison, brought them out, out on trial, and the apostles, again, preached and accused them of killing the Messiah. <laughs> Not exactly how you want to win friends and influence people in the court of the Sanhedrin. So the Sanhedrin is like, well, we killed Jesus, let's just kill them. We have the authority to do it. Like, they're a bunch of nobodies. Let's just kill them. And in this thing, and one of the guys who was there, his name is Gamaliel. He was a Pharisee. He was a politician. He was a, a pretty smart guy. He said, hey, wait a minute. Don't you remember there was this guy a few years ago, got hundreds of followers and started a revolution. He got killed. The followers scattered. And then a few years later, there was another guy, and he gathered thousands of people around him, and, and he thought he was something, and then he died, and his followers scattered. And he said, hey, if, if this Jesus is a nobody then the same thing's gonna happen. But then he actually says this in Acts 5, 38. But if this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, then you will not be able to overthrow them. It kind of makes you go, hmm, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it really does. So three options for deciding who is Jesus. Three options. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is a liar, or Jesus is a lunatic. Jesus is the Christ, he's a con man, or he's crazy. Which do you believe? You see, yeah, oh, look, we all know the answer in church. I mean, we're in church for goodness sake. I mean, we're called Calvary. We're not, we're not advocating for option two and three. That's not, look, you know that's not what we're teaching, but here's the thing. It doesn't matter what you say in this room. What matters is what you believe in your heart. What matters is the decision that you make. And, and so the people who are enthusiastic and say, oh yeah, he's my Lord. Well, okay, you've probably already confessed Jesus with your mouth. You've probably already publicly proclaimed your faith in baptism. You're probably already trying to live for him. But there's a lot of people here and, and online that maybe haven't decided which they choose to believe. Now, personally, I choose to be a fool for Jesus because Jesus has changed my life. He has set me free. He has blessed me incredibly. He promises heaven as my future, and I'm gonna live my life for Jesus according to the word of God and as his servant. Okay, I'm a fool for Jesus, all right? That's my choice. That choice is easy for me, but see, I can't choose it for you. You have to decide. So which is it? Is Jesus Lord? A liar or a lunatic? And see, whatever you choose, see, whatever you choose, you have to ask yourself this. Does your life reflect your faith? It's easy to say, Jesus is my Lord. But Jesus did ask this question in Matthew 7 when he said, why do you say, uh, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father which is in heaven. In Luke chapter 6, he said, why do you call me Lord and do not do what I say? Does your life reflect your faith? Now, if you're here and you want to talk more about Jesus, we would love to have that conversation. Uh, do, do one of these things. Fill out a Connect card. 
put some information on there, say I want to talk about Jesus, drop it in one of the offering boxes. We would be glad to have that conversation with you this week. Find one of the pastors. You've seen some on stage. There'll be people out in the foyers and just say, hey, I want to have a conversation about Jesus. Our prayer team will be here at the front after the service. They'll just be waiting here and they would love to pray for you and answer any questions you have about Jesus. Or just simply walk out to that Alpha table and sign up for Alpha and show up and spend the next eight weeks figuring out, is, this, is Jesus really who he said he is? Because we want you to know the answer and our hope and prayer, my hope and prayer, is that you decide to join me in being a fool for Jesus and that you would confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And you would believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead so that you might share in this wonderful gift of salvation. Let's pray. Father, thank you that Jesus is alive. Thank you that you loved us and you rescued us from hell. You rescued us through the power of, uh, of your son and his sacrifice on the cross that defeated sin, that defeated death, that defeated darkness in every realm. God, it is unbelievable that you would offer us this gift. And so my prayer, my hope is that right now your Holy Spirit would speak to every person in this room, every person joining us online, that, that they would know in their heart that Jesus is Lord, that he is the Son of God, that he is the Savior of the world, and that they choose to confess with their mouth that he is their master and their Savior from this day forward. Lord, we want to live for you. We want to love like you. We want to be your servants in this world. So whether the world thinks we're foolish or not, we don't care. We choose Jesus because he is the king. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. This is what the angels said to the women who went to the tomb on the morning of the third day after Christ's crucifixion. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. If this is the first time hearing this message or the first time that the power of it has really hit you and you'd like to speak to a pastor, please email us at questions at calvaryaz.com. We'd be happy to contact you and pray with you. Well, thanks for joining us. Have a blessed week. Please come back and join us again next weekend. Bye-bye.